Hello! Parallax effects are really, really popular within websites. This is where, as you scroll down, the content rises, but the background image does rise, but a little slower. You can see how that creates uh, the optical illusion of depth. And that's really popular on websites. I'm going to show you in this tutorial how you can create that same effect within PowerPoint itself. Here is my first slide, and you'll see that if I progress to the next slide, I create that parallax effect and then again on this slide here watch the way the new content rises faster than the background picture rises to create that illusion of depth. So let's see how we create a parallax effect in Microsoft PowerPoint. So I'm going to start this tutorial with a completely blank new presentation and I'm going to start this with a blank slide so I'm going to head up to layout and click on blank. Now what I need is a photograph for the back so I'm going to go on to the internet and I'm going here to a website called unsplash.com which is really great, it's got a lot of really good quality photographs and their Creative Commons zero licensing. So in other words you can use those images for anything you like uh, without having to worry about um, a payment or attribution or anything at all, you can do whatever you like with these pictures. So I've come onto unsplash.com and I've chosen some images to do with balloons, I'm going to click on this image and then I'm going to right click it and copy. I'm going to head back into my PowerPoint presentation and then paste it and as we do we find that the image is a lot bigger than the original slide. So if I snap this image into the top left corner of the slide and then I re resize it we'll find that it's not just bigger than the slide it's a different shape to the slide. Now my slide is 16 by 9 which is uh, HD widescreen and this image is clearly a different shape. So what I'm going to do uh, with that image being slightly larger than the original slide is I'm going to click on the image to select it and then head up to format at the top. I'm then going to come across to the right where it says crop and click on the bottom half of the button to bring up the menu and then I'm going to choose aspect ratio and then 16 by 9 which is the same as the size of my um, slide. So I click on that it then automatically uh, crops or shows the pre-crop status of the image yes I'm happy with that so I click on the crop button again to accept that. Now the image is still bigger than the slide but it is now exactly the same proportions so if I snap it into the top left corner and then grab the bottom right corner and bring that in, we'll find that it is a perfect fit for my slide. So there we are, we've got the uh, background image, that's step one. Now the second thing I'm going to do is put some text in front of that image. So I'm going to go to insert and then click on text box. Click somewhere in the middle and I'm going to choose some text now. And then what we'll do is we'll increase the size of that, we'll change the font, uh, we'll have Bebas New, uh, we'll increase that, we'll turn it white, let's have that nice and big. And what I want is to have this right in the middle of my slide and one of the ways we can do that is to simply click on the text box. Uh, then if we click the format button again at the top and then choose align we can see that the option to align to slide is ticked so all I need to do is click on align center to align it horizontally in the middle and then align middle to align it vertically in the middle so there we are that's now perfectly centered in the middle of my slide so there we are that's step two now the next thing we need to do is to insert a shape and we're going to go to insert I'm going to click on shapes and just choose an ordinary rectangle doesn't matter what we do with it we just stick it anywhere for the moment and the first thing I need to do is to remove the outline remove the outside edge from that we don't need that 
So with this rectangle selected, I come up to Shape Outline and I choose No Outline. And then for the color, what I'm gonna do is come up to Shape Fill and then choose the eyedropper. This allows me then to pick any color from my image and I'm gonna choose the same sort of fawny tan sand color that we've got down here. So I'm gonna click on that. Yep, that's fine. Um, and then what I'm gonna do, in fact, I'm gonna choose a slightly darker one. I think that might not help the white show up quite as clearly. So let's choose that slightly darker one there. That's fine. And then I'm gonna snap this rectangle into the top left corner. See how we get those little dotted red lines that show us when we've snapped it in. And in fact, it does seem to pull uh, into that corner when we move it. I'm going to drag the bottom right corner into the bottom right corner of the slide. So that's now the exact same size as the slide. And what I need to do is zoom out. Uh, you could zoom in and out using this slider at the bottom right corner, but my preference is to hold the control button down and then simply use the wheel on my mouse. That's a, a lot easier, I think, to zoom in and out using that method. So I'm going to zoom out to there and simply drag this um, brown rectangle underneath that image and just snap it so it's exactly in line with the image um, and snapped up against its lower edge. Okay, that's good. Now the next thing is the text box in the middle here. I'm going to copy that and bring a copy of it down into the center of this sandy colored rectangle. Now I could just copy and paste that text box, but a good way of uh, copying an image or a text box or any object in fact is to hold down the control button, then click and drag the item that you want to duplicate, um, and then simply let go with the mouse, and then you can let go with the control button. And what that does is duplicates it, but it allows you to move it at the same time. Now what I need to do is to align this bit of text here into the center of the sandy rectangle. So first of all, what we'll do is change the text itself. Um, so let's just type some text in there. Um, and then what we'll do is we want this to be aligned centered, not with the slide, which of course is actually above this area, but centered within this rectangle. So I'm going to click on the rectangle first, then I'm going to hold the shift key down on my keyboard and click on this text box. So that way I've selected both items. I then come up to the format button again at the top and click on align. And you'll see this time, instead of aligning to slide, the tick box is next to this option to align selected option uh, objects. So if I click align center and then align middle, what happens is the text box is exactly centered within this rectangle. Okay, so that's it as far as adding all the objects is concerned. The next step is to actually add the animation. Now, there are two parts to this animation. The first part will be this rectangle and the two text boxes. They will slide upwards. The background image will also slide upwards, but it will do that independently of the other three items. So as these three items will all move together, the easiest thing to do is to add them into a single group. So I'm going to click on this sandy rectangle, hold the shift button down so I can select multiple items, click on this text box, then click on this text box, and then if I just right click on any of these, I can go to group and then click group. So that's now one object, and this picture at the back is the second object. So now we can add the animation in. So I'm gonna go up to animations at the top. And then from the ribbon, if we just scroll down to the bottom list of options, we have all the paths and lines, and we're simply gonna choose lines. Now that adds in an animation, but as you see, it's actually going the wrong way. That doesn't matter at all. We can simply click on effect options here on the right hand side and change it from going down to going up. And there we are, it's now rising up. Because it's not rising up enough. It needs to rise up a little bit further than that. In fact, it needs to rise up 
so that this sandy rectangle here entirely covers the slide area at the top. Now if you look, you'll see a little arrow appear in the middle of our um, animated group. And in the middle of that, if I just zoom in a bit, you'll see that there is a green triangle. That's the start position for the animation. Then there's a light colored dot 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 line. And then we have a red triangle and that's the finish point for this animation. So what I have to do is click on that animated line and we see that the triangles now turn into circles and I can put my mouse onto the red circle. Now I have to be careful here because I want this um, animation to go directly up. But if I just grab it, the risk is that I'm going to end up going sideways at an angle and that won't look quite as good. So what I'm going to do instead is to hold down the shift key and this locks that line in. I'm moving my mouse left and right and you'll see that these objects are just going directly up. There's absolutely no movement left or right. So all I do is I just drag it up until it exactly overlaps the slide and the image at the back. There we are, can let go, and that's done. So that's the first animation. Now the second animation is of course this coloured picture here at the back. So I'll click on that coloured picture. Again, we'll go to the Animations tab, scroll down to the bottom of all the different categories and choose Lines. Again, it will add the animation in the wrong way, so we simply go straight to the Effect Options button and change down to Up. There we are, so that's rising up. Uh, we'll probably make it rise a little higher than that. Um, but in order to edit the length of path, we'll need to tidy things up a little bit. Because you can see here that I've got a green triangle for the start position of my first group. There it is, just here at the bottom. And then I can clearly see a dashed line going up. Here is another green triangle, which must be the start position for the picture. But then we have two red triangles up here. One, of course, is the end position for the group. The other is the end position for the picture. But there's no way of telling which one is which. So an easy option here is to simply hide all the bits of this slide we don't need to worry about for the moment. So to do that, what we need to do is just click on the objects. That's the bit that we want to get rid of. And if we go to Home, and then on the right hand side in the editing section we click on select and just bring up the selection pane and here you'll see the object that I've currently selected in this pink color here it's called group 14 and that contains these three items here two text boxes and a rectangle underneath is this other item here picture 10 that's my background image and on the right hand side of all of these are little eye icons and I can simply tick or press the icon of the eye next to group 14 and that hides it. So that's now disappeared, don't have to worry about that anymore. I can bring it back any time at all, but for the moment let's now just focus on the animation for this picture. So I've clicked on the picture, we can't see that animated line, so we need to go back into animations and then it appears. And again, all I need to do is click on that animated line there and if I Oh yeah, just a little bit slow responding there. Uh, but if I click on the shift key on my keyboard again, I can drag this up without it sliding left or right. And I'm going to slide it up to about the point where my mouse is at the top of the original slide. In other words, this image is sliding up about half its height. That's about right. Okay, there we are, that's done, so I can now accept that. I can go back to my selection panel on the right hand side and I can restore visibility of the other items. And now there is just one final thing. If we go back to animations and we click on the animation pane, we'll see our two animations, but at the moment, each one is triggered by a click. So I have to click once for the group to rise up and then I have to click a second time for the image to rise up. And of course, we want them both to happen at the same time. So I'll click on this second animation. And at the top, we'll just change this option from start on click to start with previous. So in other words, I will click once 
and both animations will happen at the same time. So what I'm going to do now is go back to the slideshow button at the bottom here, or I could simply press the F5 button at the top of my keyboard, and we'll go into our presentation. There we are. So there is the first slide, and what I'm going to do is click to progress to the second one, and you'll see how the content rises up and the background rises up, but they both do it slightly independently. So here we go. There we are, like that. I'll go back and you can see that happen again. So here we are. You can see the image rising up, but it's slightly beaten by the new content rising up that little bit more quickly. So that's it. That's all there is uh, to it, to creating this uh, neat little parallax uh, effect. And you can obviously add multiple copies of this sort of setup throughout your presentation um, so that you have multiple parallax transitions from one slide to the next. So it's quite a cool little trick. I uh, hope you liked that video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. It does make a difference. And it would be fantastic if you could subscribe as well. Um, and then you'll simply be first to know when new little tips, tricks and tutorials are available. So thank you very much indeed for watching and I will see you in the next video.